Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. So, as you can see, I'm going to move on to the mechs in my, well, this will be the second part in my Battletech series of videos so far. So, I'll be demonstrating my process for painting a mech from the new Battletech box game. If you'll wait one moment, I will, and probably, at least past me, there we go, getting the box in question. So yeah, release, re-released by Catalyst Game Labs in the wait, well, partially due to the um, Mech War uh, Battletech revival due to the um, release of the game. And I will demonstrate the process I went through to clean up and paint this miniature in a, well, basically speed paint this miniature in a way which will make it look um, nice and weathered and fit for the tabletop. So to start with, I'm just doing some basic cleaning up of the flash. Um, these miniatures themselves look, I hate to say it, they aren't the best in terms of their molding quality. So they did require a bit of work and it was very, very soft plastic and very hard to clean up. But I did an okay job, even though in the final results some mold lines were still visible. So to start with, I'm attacking the mold lines more generally with my GW Hobby um, Scraper, which more or less does the job. And then later on, I'll move on to using files to um, finish, it, finish it off as I um, get closer to a, a finish, which I prefer. Uh, there you go. I'm also going, going back in with the scalpel just to get the more difficult to reach places where the hobby tool doesn't necessarily have the reach or the sharpness to do. And here we go, now that we're done with the um, hard work on the mold line removal, we're just going to get our files, and uh, our sanding sticks rather, and just carefully um, try to buff down what remains of the mold lines. And like I said, the job wasn't great, and I had, you know, there's a lot of back and forth to get at all the specific bits and pieces which were particularly hard to reach. Um, overall, uh, as much as I hate to say it, these aren't the greatest quality of models that I've ever worked on. But still, a mech is a mech, and I kind of like the more chunky um, battle mechs rather than the older, more spindly ones. So, I like the aesthetic, the construction quality, mmm, could have been better. Let's just say that. Okay, now that we're done with the... Um, with the filing, we'll do the base work, so I'm going to try something a little different, so I'm just getting my uh, surface prepped, some PVA out, and yeah, we are going to get going. So first of all, we're going to throw down a bit of twig. This represents is meant to represent a fallen log, um, and, but we're also going to be more generally painting, the, um, covering the entire base with uh, dead fallen materials, so... Generally, I'm going to cover the entire base with PVA as a starting step. So with our fallen log down, we can move on to a few rocks. So let's just get that done. And finally, we'll put down our sand, just also before we do that, just clean up the uh, PVA where it started to dry on the model, and then, yep, there we go, clean up the rims, and we're good, we have successfully based the model, so I'll come back when it's primed and ready to go, and we'll get to painting. So to start with, I've put down a coat of Corex White, and we're going to do our first colour. Well, we're going to prepare our first colour. So the first colour I'm using is Glacier Blue, and I'm also going to use some... I'm just getting out a, sel a selection of colours that I'm going to use to do this. So I'm going to get a base colour and a pattern colour, because I'm going to try and do this a two-colour camo soft edge um, scheme. 
So to start with, we'll get our base code established, which is just a Vallejo game color glacier blue. So nothing much to really say about the step. Just get the paint on the model, two thin coats, as Duncan tells you, and then uh, let it dry thoroughly. All right, now that our base coat is down, we'll start on the soft edge camo. So it's easy enough, just get your brush. And um, not quite dry brush, but somewhat damp brush and try and stipple the pattern on like what I'm doing now. So yeah, don't obviously don't overload your brush as well. Like you can see me cleaning it off there. And just sort of like do stabbing motions to start establishing soft edge splotches where the um, other color of the camo pattern is meant to be. Now that we are done with the initial camo pattern, what I'm doing is I'm going back with the original hull color and I'm sort of softening the edges between the um, stippled um, secondary color and the main coat. This is to try and get that gradual transition from color to color and to try and blend the two colors in together as best I can. Initially I found this look a bit too stark, but don't worry about it. Um, subsequent steps will really go a long way towards tying all of the colors together and making it look like a more unified model. So I'm just going to paint some secondary markings now, so to start with some hull numbers on the shoulder pads and some nose art up front. I'm just going to use basic red paint, so no, uh, nothing fancy, no highlighting. The idea is just to do many, many thin strokes until you get the pattern that you, uh, that you like. Now I tried to do a little um, heart on that little panel up the front of the hull, but that didn't really work out, so instead it looks like a downward pointing triangle on the model. Um, yeah, paint, trying to paint at this scale is hard, and I would have preferred to have used transfers. So if anybody watching knows of a decent manufacturer of Battletech scale transfers that'll work for this model, let me know in the comments, please. And finally, just to break up the model a bit, I'm going to paint some of the weapon details a, um, a, a shadow grey from Vallejo Game Color. This is just to break up the model a bit and make it look like there's more colours than just the basic camo um, on the model. So, yeah, it's simple as just give it a flat base coat and you're done. Alright, now we're moving on to the, um, well continuing a few other of the, of the details for a moment, but we'll work on the canopy now. So the canopy is obviously the cockpit, basically. Um, and to start with, we'll just give it a f an undercoat of a fairly dark blue color, and then we'll gradually lighten it up to make more of a horizon shade effect as best we can. To start with, I gave it a coat of ultramarine blue and let that dry. Now in the top right of the corner, I'm gradually painting it a little bit of magic blue, trying to just emphasize the transition between colors. And 
and then I'll do the same again, but this time between the magic blue and electric blue, again in the top right corner, emphasizing the change between colors. And finally, to get more dark going on in the bottom right, I'm going to do, do the transition from ultramarine blue to a night blue color. So yeah, it's um, fairly simple, it's just many different steps. And of course, to finish it off, sorry for getting out of camera a lot, I'm just going to put down some dots on the top and bottom right corners of the glass to represent glint. Alright, so the final step is an overall highlight. And to start with, we're going to use um, Vallejo Off-White, which is our first real warm colour which we're introducing to try and tie the model together. So, simple dry brush deal just um, emphasize the upper surfaces and highest edges and just try to catch all colors regardless of what they are you really want this layer to try and tie all of these colors together and by giving them all the same highlight color that's what um, well we're going to achieve with this step To continue on, we're going to do some um, weathering not on the model now. To start with, we're going to do scratches, and this color is Vallejo Model Color German Camo Black Brown, and we're just going to use a bit of pack, um, blister sponge to get some chips on the model. So just just be careful when doing this. Don't make sure your little sponge bit is not too overloaded. Ideally, use a bit of tw piece of use some tweezers to um, actually make the application. And just put it all over the model, emphasizing the areas that would likely be um, scuffed and um, damaged, like the feet and the hands, and all of the upper edges. And once that's done, you've got your basic weathering. Of course, um, if you overdo it, you can clean up your any mistakes with a bit of brush to uh, get rid of the worst of it. And that's that. All right, and our final stage of weathering is to put down some, um, yeah, flat earth on the legs to represent, well, this mech has been meant to be in, have been in the field for a while, so obviously it would have been striding through all sorts of swamps, tr uh, forests, and wilderness in general, so it stands to reason that large parts of it would be um, subject to dirt, dust, and grime. So, yeah, I'm just what I'm going to do is just build that, this up around the legs until I'm happy with it, and that's that. Okay, now this is the real piece de resistance of the, pro of the process, the stage which really binds it together. So to start with, I've got my model, and I've given it an initial coat off camera of my Long Life Floor Polish. Now this is the gloss layer meant to separate the, the paint job which we just established from the enamel wash that we're putting on. Now the color I'm using is uh, the um, MIG um, Ammo Dark Wash. And if you recall back to my Battletech tank video where I painted that 3D printed miniature, I was using brown. In retrospect for that video, I should have been using this color because it turned. This is a very dark brown black, which is ideal for shading um, like weathered and military models. Um, so yeah, in, in future projects, I'll probably be using this shade exclusively. Actually, I do wonder if Mig's still around, because I would like, I probably should buy up some additional copies of this color in case the manufacturer goes out of stock. It's definitely become one of my staples in the um, enamel toolkit, so to speak. Now, for the application, it's the same as on the 3D printed miniature. You just make sure you get it on and all over the model. Especially make sure you work into all of the cracks and crevices. That's especially where you want this stuff to settle. Anyway, once it's all dry, you should have um, a fairly wet and ugly looking model. That's fine. What you need to do now is leave it for two to, uh, a day to two days, and it should be ready for the cleanup stage. The advantage of you working with enamels is you can clean up your um, paint after you've put it on and let it dry to a degree. Let's see how that works. All right, so it's been about two days and the paint still is not touched dry, but that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get our clean rag and any time now, buddy, we're gonna start buffing down the miniature and you can see the paint is pretty much coming right off, but really getting left in the recesses. And for more difficult to reach places, we're gonna use our cotton buds off to the side there. So yeah, the first passes with a t-shirt, and the second passes are with cotton buds. Mm -hmm. 
So for the vast majority of the model, we want to ret return to the base color, but for all of the recesses and cracks, we want to leave the brown in to really get the definition of the model um, showing nicely. Anyway, that's pretty much done. Um, now what I do, did was let it dry for another day or so, and then I gave it a very, very thin airbrush coat of satin varnish just to kill what remains of the gloss and to lock in the um, enamel wash a bit better. And then we're ready to finish off the base and move on to completing the model. So the bases I'm going to try to do a little bit differently. It's mostly going to be my standard woodland method, but try and um, re-emphasize for the um, new scale that we're painting at. So to start with, an overall base coat of camo black brown. So we'll let this dry and then we'll come back and uh, move on to the next stage. So we're going to use our uh, flat earth to just overbrush the entire base. And this will, um, yeah, basically start establishing that earthy tone for the um, soil that the mech is striding over. And to finish it off, we're going to give the base a dry brush with dark sand just to highlight the soil. And what I'm doing there, I'm just fixing a um, bit of cork rock back to the base that fell off due to the um, overly vigorous dry brushing. Anyway, to move on, um, I've got some black there, and I'm just going to start putting the black room on the base to just um, finish it. It's my usual style. Some people do brown or green. I prefer black, just to make it very stark. And I'll start um, painting the twig, so it basically all gets blown away in the end. But I'll paint the tree bark itself um, beige brown, and the... Um, the edges where the actual raw wood is exposed inside um, are cork brown, which is a bit lighter. So here we're going to put a bit of highlighting on the tree bark. So I initially screw this up, 
and used a brush which is a bit too ragged to effectively um, lay down a thin line. But I'm just going to paint little striations along the trunk, trunk to try and emphasize some texture in the wood. So if you take a moment to see there, yeah, just basically painting up and down the model. And if it's a bit too much, I'll rub it off with my finger. Oh, and I've also gone ahead and painted the um, the rocks their initial base coat of German grey. And we're also going to do the same with the little um, bit of plastic that the mech is standing on. We'll make it look like he's standing on a tree trunk, just to try and blend that bit of um, model in with the base. We'll also get to work on the remaining rocks. So we'll overbrush a little bit of neutral grey onto the rocks just to get our mid-tone going. And also, yeah, continue to work on the base, as the one coat of black is often never enough just to establish that um, coat. Okay, so we're going to finish off the rocks now by getting some sky grey and getting a nice dry brush of it going and just gently run it across the top of all of the rocks to f emphasize the final highlights for them okay so for this stage and to finish off the wood i'm going to use contrast um so i've already tried to get some really sharp highlights in the wood so hopefully this will show through in the end i don't think the experiment was 100 percent successful but it looks good enough for the tabletop uh, perhaps another a more lighter color would have worked a bit better um, so I think this one was snakebite leather or Gorgoranta brown or something, I don't remember. Either way, just a single thin layer. Um, again, again, don't use the one thick coat, just one thin coat. And hopefully a lot of the um, texturing we've done um, will show through, which it did to a degree. And finally, just for aiding with gaming, we'll put down a single line of red on the designated front of the miniature, just to remove any ambiguity when playing this on the tabletop, especially with the hex grid version of Battletech. The red melt line indicates facing. Simple. So there we go, we're done. I definitely, um, yeah, have liked the way this turned out so far. The dark enamel wash has definitely um, toned down the colors on the model, while also keeping some of our highlights, and has done a great job of blending the entire thing together. So another thing I did differently for this model was the basing. Um, for the flock, I used a two, two products, a very, very thin model railroaders flock, and some um, sponge-like bushes. So this was meant to basically meant to represent both grass and larger pieces of shrubbery, which I think it did pretty well. So regular static grass would look a bit odd at the scale unless you were specifically doing something like elephant grass, which is meant to be tall and ungainly. I don't think the fallen tree trunk came out as good, though I like still like the concept. And in future miniatures, I'm going to try and elaborate the, on this some more. So overall, pretty happy with the result, and it's remarkably quick to paint. Um, so yeah. I'll see you on the next um, video. See you now.